Hello and welcome. My name is Matt and this is most likely your very first consultation in regards to something like cologne or aftershave, perfume, whichever word you use to describe the subtleties in our scent. Obviously we are incredibly biased but I personally and sincerely believe nothing quite sets the tone and the immediacy of an impression like scent. If you're meeting somebody for the very first time and as they walk into the room, you're met with a very obvious but very subtle, attractive, maybe even alluring scent. You view them in a different light. You, your entire perception is altered. It's, instead of an attack on the senses, it's not an assault, it's almost a musical. It's attractive, but it's so easy. I apologize. I am clearly very passionate about the colognes that we sell and the work that we do. I'd like to just talk you through what it is that we'll be doing today and what it is that you can expect from our consultation. So, I'll ask you a few questions about what it is that you find attractive in a perfume, cologne and aftershave, that when somebody walks past you, what kind of circumstances, what kind of smells do you think, hmm, I quite like that. And there definitely will be some instances where you think, hmm, that was, that was too much. I want to make sure that not only do you smell nice for other people, but you're happy with the, the scent, with the actual, the body of the perfume. Okay? Part of the success of an aftershave, almost like clothing, we have to be comfortable in our own style. There's no point in you wearing something that you don't like the smell of, because it... Again, it has an immediacy on the way you react and the way you conduct yourself. If you're not confident in how you smell, and you can't have confidence that other people are going to like how you smell, it's going to have an impact and uh, almost a governance with how you behave. And again, I would say this because I am naturally biased, but I think that when you leave today, we're going to find you a scent that is you. Okay, all right. I'm gonna ask you a few fairly simple questions. And then I'll run you through some scents that uh, might, we want something that resonates with you. And based on your selections and what you're kind of gravitating towards, we obviously have hundreds um, of colognes and aftershaves on sale. And instead of going through the, the entire hundred, we'd be here for hours. Based on your selections, I can select something for you. Or at least narrow it down to perhaps two or three. Sound good? All right. Let me just grab my pen. Okay. Are you comfortable? your name and I'd like to remind you that we're in no rush okay and if we have time we can even look at um, maybe an antiperspirant or a roll-on something like that because it's it's one thing smelling nice from a cologne or a perfume but the last thing we want is any fouler 
odors clouding our fine work today. And everyone can succumb. We all perspire when we get hot. And we sell some very, very effective antiperspirants. Not, of course, you smell beautiful today. But I'm sure after an hour in the gym, I have never spent an hour in the gym. But I'm sure after an hour, maybe you wouldn't be quite so sweet smelling. All right. This might seem unnecessary, but I'd like you to relax and enjoy the process because I assure you, it's all contributing toward the perfect selection for you. All right? Now, do you remember the last time you thought, wow, when somebody walked past, they smell incredible? Okay. And did you happen to know what it was? Okay. I remember said, uh, now, when we say masculine and feminine, we can, I'd like to elaborate a bit more. Masculine is a very uh, full bodied, um, usually with a base of like a, a wood, a wood kind of scent. And feminine meaning floral, usually. They are a little bit archaic, I understand, but how would you have classified the scent? All right. <laughs> okay. All right. And how often do you wear aftershave, perfume, cologne? Do you put it, do you apply after a shower? Daily or every other day? All right, good. Good. Very good. Do you moisturize before you apply? Well, curiously, moisturizing before the application of uh, a cologne actually helps to prolong the smell. This is something that people don't really realize, but our body will absorb um, any liquid that's sprayed onto its surface, and the more moisturized and hydrated the skin is, the less likely you are to be smelling beautiful by the end of the day. So we want to make sure, we also have some moisturizers if we have time, I can take you through those. Um, but you want to make sure you're moisturizing beforehand. But if you if you don't currently moisturize and you don't intend to, again, that will impact the selection I make for you today. Okay. Okay. Now, if you were to walk into a room and the first thing you could smell was a wood smoke, that kind of um, an open fire, that kind of homely smell. You could walk into this room, or you could walk into the room adjacent to it, and this room is full of flowers, of lilies, of roses. Which would you choose? <sighs> okay. There is a third door that smells of um, a rosemary bread, homemade bread, just coming out of the oven, if you want me to give you a third option. Okay. No, that's very helpful. That's very, very helpful. Thank you. Okay. I'd like you just to sit tight, and I will present you with a couple of different smells and during the process of creating a scent whether it's cologne or perfume it's a little bit like writing a piece of music and I used a musical um, example earlier because you sit down and you think what exactly is it that you want to say 
What are you trying to accomplish? And when we're creating a perfume, there are new techniques for extracting new scents and flavors being invented uh, every year. But the inkjet printer, for example, has a very small selection of colors and it can create millions, variety of millions. That's the power that we have when culminating. Take a little dash of rose, a little sandalwood, maybe a bit of passion fruit, and they're amalgamated into the most exquisite scent that's delivered delicately but deliberately. Okay. Now the first scent I will present to you This is an ash wood smell. It's going to hold on to your nose and just take a little breath into the nose. And I'd like you to grade this from zero to ten. Okay. Okay. Good. Have you smelled that before? It's um, it can be used as a, a fairly prominent undertone to quite a lot of colognes. The next is a white and red rose petal. And again, if you could grade this from 0 to 10. Okay. Rose petal, again, is um, very common. And it's not in every scent that we sell, but it's, to varying degrees, it is very, very common. It's a beautiful, natural smell to it. And it really, it can act as a base, as a foundation, or as a finisher to our colognes. One of my most favorite smells. Okay, now this. Is a lavender. Lavender, again, can be quite a... a common find. There's something very comforting about the smell of lavender. People use it to fall asleep. It's a very common herbal remedy. But lavender is a scent, especially it, it blends very well, um, again, as a base that you can build upon. Lavender makes a, a very perfectly sized building block when it comes to constructing the, the ideal smell. Okay. And again, if you could grade that from zero to 10, it'd be enormously helpful. Okay surprising, but to be expected. And it's important to remember that there is no right and no wrong answer here. This is for you entirely. We are here to consult as the experts, as the subject matter experts, to help you select what's right for you. All right. Okay. Now I'd like to just... We usually stick to the base three. 
almost like primary colors, but I'll ask you to take a very quick sniff. very surprised if you could guess that. This is actually a spice and it's something we call exotic spice and part of this scent goes into a beard oil that we sell but it's a, again an amalgamation of um, six different individual spices um, cardamom, cinnamon, some little less known it has a, a roominess to it that I think you really, I, yeah, I thought you might like this. Okay, this is, this is one of these almost love or hate type things. And if they really like it, as in the client, it puts me off in a different fork. Okay, good. I've obviously been doing this for a very long time. I'm just reviewing the answers. We do actually have a, a piece of software we're developing that can make this a bit more scientific. But for the purpose of today, I have two scents, I think, especially with the, the last answer, with the exotic spice. I have two scents in mind for you, and I think you're going to like them. Bear with me two seconds. for a little treat here. I've selected two mid-ranged products in terms of price, but even if your budget was limitless, I think these two products would be the right choice for you. Now you can leave with either or, or both, or neither today, but I think, I think we could be onto something special here. The first that I'd like to present to you today is Davidoff's Cool Water. Now, this is one of what we call our vintage brands. And bear with me by two moments. I just wanted to check that we had something left in stock. We've only got the aftershave. We don't have the box set, unfortunately. It sells very well. Now, the overall body of cool water is a jasmine base with in a smoky pine wood with a little overtone of what we call a spice twang. And what I mean by that, how about we let you smell. Now these strips are absorbent strips and they're created and designed with the idea and the ability of being able to recreate what the skin does with perfume and aftershave. Hold on. Let me just wait for two seconds. And take a smell of that. What is the first thing you're met with? Exactly. It's 
It's a very sudden, masculine, except with the jasmine base. Bottle, stylish, sleek. Now this was actually developed in the 1980s. This product in particular, of course, you'll be getting a bottle that the product inside is uh, weeks old of that. But the actual concept of Cool Waters was designed in the 80s and proved enormously popular and still is today. It's one of these scents that it doesn't matter who you are, what your preference is when you're, when you're actually receiving the smell. When somebody walks into a room sporting cool waters, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to react to it. And it's almost never, ever negative. It's always, what are you, what are you wearing? That smells really nice. It's, it has a freshness to it. And uh, that jasmine base that cool water is centered around is so prominent, but it's curved by this, what we call exotic twang. And you can see what I mean by the scent. It's absolutely beautiful. But it, again, the immediacy, it's almost sharp without being too deliberate. That was product number one. Now I'd like you to take a deep breath and welcome product number two. Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Mail. Now I feel like I owe you a little bit of honesty. This is my favorite cologne, and it's one I wear every day and have worn since I was 18 years old. It has How about I let you smell it first? Every girlfriend I've ever had has always complimented me on this scent. My shirts smell of it. You maybe smell it when you walked in the room, actually. Now, I don't like mint. I don't dislike it, but the base of this little product is actually a fresh mint. It's a, a, a mint breeze, actually but it's complemented very heavily by a lavender and an orange blossom undertone. And these three come together to form a very masculine and very warm scent. There's something almost intoxicating about La Mail. It's a product that's been cultured and, and designed with a lot of thought in mind and it's almost polar opposite to cool water. Cool water by its very name is very fresh, very bright and again very immediate but without being uncomfortably so. La Mail is smoother, slicker, it's muskier. There's a, a muskiness to La Mail that I think you're, as I can tell you, you're really going to enjoy. It's, it actually clings to, to fabric and to skin very well as well. You find that any product by Jean-Paul Gaultier um, has incredible staying power, especially if you remember to moisturize. 
No, it's again, this isn't quite vintage. This was first released in 1995, and again, it's been a, a very popular seller, but maybe not as mainstream as cool water. It's a little bit more expensive, but as you can tell by the design of the bottle, it has a refinement to it. That it always proves very popular. How are you if you had to pick one? Mm -hmm. We do, of course, have uh, an enormous range of perfumes. Um, my immediate recommendation would be Beautiful. Beautiful is, um, it isn't floral. I can give you a little scent of it. Beautiful by Sla Laura is, it's the most prominent feminine scent I think I have ever smelled. It's delicate, but decadent. Mm -hmm. It is towards our premium end of our costs, but if you like, I can roll it into a bundle with one of the two masculine scents. Mm. Of course. All right. I'll get that boxed up for you. Now, I did mention earlier in the consultation about antiperspirants, um, sprays, and roll-ons. One, one thing I will advise against, never ever wear a deodorant. A deodorant is completely useless. It's cheap, it's ineffective, and it doesn't mask. If you're trying to use it to, after a gym workout, for example, uh, it won't work. It has a, a very cheap and, and very uh, metallic smell to, to body sprays and deodorants that I just have no time for. However, I would like to introduce you to a roll-on called Effective. This is 0% and it's um, antiperspirant. This is actually a Latin American product. We've had these shipped in from Peru. And the reason we do this, we have never found a more effective roll on at preventing perspiration ever. If you wear shirts or blouses quite a lot, um, it has very little smell to it and will quite literally protect up to 48 hours. And this is something that you read and you see in advertisements quite a lot, but very rarely is it ever delivered upon. This roll-on will do exactly as you need. Would you like me to include Now, I did mention that it is important to moisturize before applying any kind of scent. Now, you can spend a whole range, a whole host, stupidly large amounts of money on very simple moisturizers. What I would recommend, something really affordable, a Nivea Soft, it's, um, refreshing moisturizer, it's deep penetrating, and it's very quickly absorbed. It won't leave your, your neck greasy. And it can also be worked into the face and to the T-zone. Okay? We do have a, a variety of moisturizers, but given what we've selected so far, I think this would be the right choice for you. Okay. This, uh, All right, I think we're um, about done. Of course, yeah. 
there's something very interesting about um, our choice of scent. I said it can it can go quite a long way into defining the kind of character that we are, and in some cases the kind of character that we aspire to be. And I do wonder if uh, more people took the kind of scent they carry around in the day to day a little bit more seriously. Maybe people generally might be in a bit of a happier mood. Because it's one thing to look good, but somebody can look incredible, they can look a million bucks, and then they walk over to you, and maybe they don't smell great, they have bad breath, they um, have groggy eyes, but a scent can almost fuzzy everything else, it's almost intoxicating in itself, it's very easy to get lost in somebody's scent very, very powerful and very attractive. And I do say, this comes with a disclaimer that I'm here to sell aftershave. <laughs> but I wouldn't be here working a cologne store unless I absolutely believed in the work that we do here. It's been my absolute pleasure to see you today. And if we can ever, ever, ever help you in the future, please do not hesitate to call and swing past. Of course, I do, I do necessarily have to be here for you, but if um, it was for you or for um, a friend of yours that has facial hair and they're maybe new to growing a beard and facial hair, there is something that you might want to consider. This is our luxury beard wash. Now, people make the mistake of shampooing their beard with hair shampoo. And hair shampoo is very concentrated. The scalp is very resilient. And the face is far more sensitive than the scalp, believe it or not. Our beard and this is from the, uh, it's from a company called Modern Day Duke that we work very closely with. We have a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of, of our own resources invested in Modern Day Duke. We absolutely believe in the product that they produce. I use this on my own beard and I cannot recommend it enough. This is sh actually shipped out of England. If anyone knows how to take care of a beard, it's British. <laughs> I can include, okay, I'll include a bottle of this for you. It makes a fantastic gift any time of the year. And it's something that I wish people would buy me more often. It's not overly expensive, so you can see the mark. But it's uh, incredibly effective. And it's very easily forgotten about. Our beard, we don't love our beards enough sometimes. there's anything else, then uh, again, we're here, we're open seven days a week, and uh, I love uh, consultations. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Sure, have a nice evening, and I'll see you really soon.